So did Alex Jones save a group of migrant children from Central America from human trafficking or smuggling? No. Quite frankly, the idea that Alex Jones now gives a rat's ass about the welfare of these brown children from Central America is laughable at best. Alex Jones is nothing but an attention whore. All he was trying to do was whip up fear and anger among his listeners or followers in order to get them motivated against the Biden administration. Now, having seen the entire video and done a little bit of research on my own, I'm going to give you the benefit of my experience as an immigration lawyer to explain what's going on. My name is William Kovach and I am a trained immigration lawyer. I've often been disappointed in the way immigration issues are talked about in the media, although it's not always their fault. Immigration law can be a very complex subject touching upon constitutional issues as well as personal political points of view. My goal is to explain immigration law to you, concentrating on looking at judicial opinions and executive actions in order to explain how immigration law can have an impact on our community and on our country. I hope that you'll join me as we try to make sense of immigration law and how it may affect the average person. So if you're watching me right now, very likely you've already seen the Alex Jones video. I'm not going to play into his ego by showing any clips of it here. Now in this video, we see an older gentleman in a blue shirt that's marked staff. He's loading a number of Latino children in a minivan as well as a woman holding a baby. Alex Jones runs in front of the minivan in order to stop it, claiming that this man is engaged in smuggling and basically makes a scene of the fact that they are not wearing seatbelts. The entire video includes some commentary by a man named Drew Hernandez. Now, some research, Drew Hernandez, he considers himself to be a, an investigative journalist. Mm, that's probably stretching the whole definition of what a journalist is. So what's going on in this video? First of all, the children who are climbing into that minivan, they're very likely a family unit. That's probably a mom and her five children. How do I know this? Well. It's because CBP does not release unaccompanied alien children just to anybody. By law, CBP has to turn over unaccompanied alien children to the Office of Refugee Resettlement. The Office of Refugee Resettlement, or ORR, then looks for foster families to place the children while they're awaiting their immigration court proceedings. And that's obviously not what's going on in this video, particularly because there is a woman there who appears to be their mother. In fact, CBP would not just release these children to anybody. There would have to be some kind of evidence that this is a mother and her children before CBP would release them together. Now, why were they being released? Well, let's start off by explaining the process. U.S. immigration law has something called expedite removal. This is when an alien who has no visa is being apprehended, usually within the first two weeks of coming into the United States, within 100 miles of the border. CBP then has the power, once they've abducted the alien, to just ship them back across the border without putting them through removal proceedings. The exception is if the alien expresses some kind of fear or a, uh, a reasonable fear of persecution if they were returned to their home country. Under those circumstances, the immigration authorities must then conduct a reasonable fear interview. They must get somebody from the asylum office to come and interview the alien to see if there is indeed a rational basis to believe that this person has a reasonable fear of being returned to their home country. If the person passes the reasonable fear interview, well, then they're placed in removal proceedings and they get to make their full asylum claim. And very often, as long as there's no danger to national security or public safety, that is, if there's no criminal record, these people are going to be released on bond. That means they're free to go about, find family members, and not live off of the government's dime in detention. Now, you can see in the video that Drew Hernandez is complaining about shelters with dirt floors, that first they have these shelters with dirt floor, and then they get processed, and then they get COVID tested, and then they just get released. That's essentially how Drew Hernandez characterizes the whole process. The first thing that he's talking about, those shelters with dirt floors, 
they're tent cities. Yes, there are tent cities that are currently being used as detention centers specifically for family units. And CBP is trying to get the family units out of those tent cities as fast as possible. Now, Alex Jones and his ilk, they're trying to make a false equivalency because, of course, when President Trump was caught having the most inhumane policy, the zero tolerance policy that not only locked families up, but kept them locked up for a long period of time. Well, now they're trying to make the false equivalency and saying, look, the Biden administration is locking these people up in detention as well. Well, no. What's going on is that we have these temporary facilities and CBP is trying to move them out of the facilities as quickly as possible, provided that they've passed the reasonable fear interview. So yeah, there are these detention centers that are 10 cities. They've passed the reasonable fear interview. The next step is that they get their paperwork. They get processed. They get court papers that tell them they have an immigration court case pending. Sometimes they're given a date, sometimes they're not given a date, and they're just told that they have to call an 800 number in order to keep on top of when their date's going to be. They're given instructions that they have to tell CBP or ICE, I should say, uh, where they move and what their address is. And then once they've been processed and COVID tested, they get released on bond. Now that means they have to show up to their court hearing. Now, what happens to them once they've been released on bond? Charities like Catholic Charities, uh, Lutheran Social Services is another charity. There are a couple of these charities that will step in in order to give a helping hand to migrants who have been released on bond by CBP. They may give them temporary shelter, they may give them food, they may help arrange for them to get reunited with family members who are in the United States. Uh, they may give them the beginnings of legal help. And this van that Alex Jones jumped in front of and stopped, this van was taking this family unit to Catholic charities of the Rio Grande Valley. Now, yeah, I think it is fair criticism that this volunteer just loaded the children in the back of the van without safety uh, measures like seat belts. Uh, that is a very big concern, especially because, yeah, accidents happen sometimes with the shortest of trips. I'm concerned about that. But it's also very plausible that Catholic charities and other charities like this are relying on volunteers who bring their own equipment, who bring their own minivans, and are just helping transport the children and their families from the detention facilities to Catholic charities, where Catholic charities will then help take care of them for a while. And that's because these charities have very limited resources. So they have to make some very tough decisions on how they're going to spend their resources. Are they going to directly help these families by maybe giving them some food, shelter, arranging for them to go meet their family in another part of the country, maybe give them some pocket money, or are they going to spend it on buying their own minivans? And yeah, Catholic Charities here has decided they're going to rely on the volunteers providing their own transportation. And quite frankly, if Catholic Charities had invested in their own minivans and had their logo blazoned on the side of the minivans, they would just be another target for this very harassment that Alex Jones was engaged in. So what did Alex Jones accomplish? Well, all he did was delay a mother and her children from getting to the help that they need and in the process make an ass of himself. Alex Jones certainly didn't thwart any kind of human trafficking. And quite frankly, if you watch the whole video, you see that Jones and Hernandez, they don't really care about human trafficking. Yeah, they're, they're couching all this in the, uh, the language of smuggling people across the border. But in reality, what they're concerned about is that there are charities out there that will provide help and assistance to Central American migrants who are released on bond fright by CBP. And it's a criticism that is quite obviously all wrapped up in racism. You can see that when Hernandez talks about, well, do you know that Catholic Charities gives him a plane ticket anywhere in the United States and gives him $1,200 in cash. Now, do I know if any of that's true? It's funny, I don't see any of the receipts when he talks about it. Could it be true? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And I'll say, hey, 
good for them. I'm glad Catholic Charities is out there trying to help these people. Because what Alex Jones is really concerned with is that we're letting these brown people from Central America into our country. Heaven forbid we give them a helping hand and let them come here as they're trying to flee from a very dangerous situation in their own home country. What he would want is for us to adopt more strict border policies, just like President Trump tried to adopt in order to keep the riffraff out of the country. Well, guess what? Those policies don't work. We've seen that in the Trump administration, that despite the draconian policies that the Trump administration engaged in, despite the emphasis on building the wall, it did not stop Central Americans from trying to come to the United States. And there's a question, why? Why are they still coming here? In fact, you look at the numbers. There were record numbers of apprehensions of unaccompanied alien children in 2019, which is at the height of when Trump was engaging in these draconian uh, uh, border policies. In fact, the only thing that stemmed it was COVID and the ability to use COVID as cover to just close the entire border down. And you need to ask yourself, why? The answer is quite simple gangs. There is a horrible, violent gang problem in the Northern Triangle regions of Central America. That's Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. The governments there cannot control the gangs. The gangs engage in extortion, murder, robbery, rape, and the government can't do anything about it. In many instances, children are being targeted for recruitment, and if they resist, they're going to be murdered. Quite frankly, the policies that Jones would support would not prevent human trafficking. In fact, it would do just the opposite. It would make human trafficking much more likely. Why? He just wants to drop them off on the other side of the border, close the border, and let us forget about it. Well, okay, you drop them off over in northern Mexico. What's going to happen? It creates more of an opportunity for the Mexican cartels to engage in kidnapping and selling and holding these people for ransom, i.e. human trafficking. That's what the cartels do. That's why you don't want to just throw the, these families, and in particular, unaccompanied alien children, just across the border. You're going to throw them to the very wolves that engage in this human trafficking. So let's sum this all up. Did Jones save anybody? No. What did he do? Well, he ran in front of the minivan in order to make a spectacle of himself so that he can have some publicity to make it look like that he's caring about these children who are trying to come to the United States and their safety and welfare, when in reality, he's trying to whip up the anger and fear among his white conservative audience in order to motivate them against what's happening in the Biden administration without admitting to you that the whole problem stems from the Trump administration and their absolute failure to recognize the extent of the problem and invest in the types of shelters and facilities that are necessary in order to protect these family units. I mean, let's face it, Biden couldn't have done that in three months. And Trump's policies of just trying to close down the border and throw everyone back into northern Mexico, that's not working. Not only is that not working, it's inhumane. And as President Biden tries to reverse some of these horrible, inhumane policies, yeah, there are some bumps and hiccups along the way. But Alex Jones is no hero. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If there are any topics you would like me to address in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Now, I don't like talking about this, but I am currently disabled because of complications following cancer surgery. If you're feeling generous, I'll have a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Thank you.